All right, what's up, y'all? It's Lincoln Fan here. As you see by the title of this video, what I'm showing you guys today is how to get contact finisher on Hall of Fame, as well as I'm just going to show you a good method to get all the other finishing badges. Now, real quick, what I'm showing you right here. Um, so as you can see, I'm going to pause it on this real quick. It says your effort and dedication has paid off. Um, you have earned the ability to, to focus on drills of your choosing. The coaching staff will run certain drills during official team practices, but you can press B at any time to bring up the list to choose your own. So basically um, getting this is real essential to uh, to getting to getting your badges. Now I'm gonna show you right here instantly. I was just like, okay, now let me show them like what I had. Um, so I'm going, I'm gonna go to buy my minutes and then I go to some of my stats and stuff just to show you how many games I've played. I believe it was like 11. I think it was like 11 games played, but I simmed out of one, so it was really like 10. So I think aim for like 10 games-ish, something like that. Um, as you can see, I'm not getting many minutes at all. I'm playing on like minimum, like five minute quarters. But anyway, I just wanna show you guys that. Now, um, what I'm here to show you is a great method on how to get your uh, finishing badge. So, as you can see how this offense is set up, PG is up top and then um, you see Ibaka's trailing in. I said I said PG as in like point guard in case anybody wants to be a little stickler. But um, anyway, Ibaka's coming up court. So um, the, what you're gonna want to do, you're gonna find the side that a corner is already in, preferably somebody bigger, you know, who might possibly be able to set some screens. But anyway, then you literally just hold L. Or, or I think it's uh, yeah, you hold LB um, to call for an off-ball screen. Um, now make sure, like I said, make sure you're on the wing and make sure that you have a teammate that's in the corner. So boom, you get the off ball pick. Now you call for the lob. And make sure you hold X. I usually be holding down on the right stick in previous games for the lobs, but they don't let you do that this year apparently. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna just keep showing you a couple clips that deal with things like this. So again, you're gonna see, I go to the side of like the short corner. So I got Gasol on this one. Um, so boom, you just do that. Call for the call for the lob, double Y in case anybody's curious. Um, I feel like that's kind of a given, but you never know. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's a good method to get some alley oops. Alley oops are worth, I want to say, around like 750 um, toward your your rep method. Now, obviously, right here, I'm just showing you guys what to do with this. I feel like it's pretty obvious. When you have slash takeover, just go nuts. Just just rely on your blow buys, rely on your bailout dunks. Make the most quick of work as you possibly can. Um, so right here, just boom, beat him to the sideline and just, and just dunk it. Simple as that. You still get good. Now, now in years past, you would usually have to get a contact dunk, um, cause slam dunks aren't worth anything, but they give you points toward like open dunks, um, and open layups in this now. So honestly, it's not even the end of the world if you just get an open layup. Um, but anyway, you see, I call for the off ball screen here again. Um, simple. Like, it's so easy, bro. It's so simple. Um, and I will say this is probably the easiest thing for anybody who doesn't have a lot of VC to do. Um, just considering you don't have to have many upgrades to do this. Like, you see, like, for for instance, this right here, um, I'm just at the benefit of having a good matchup. Now, obviously, if you see something like that, take advantage of it. If you got a PG on you, <laughs> if you got somebody that's like four or five inches shorter than you, um, then definitely take advantage of that. But anyway, you can see what this method is capable of doing here. Um, I only get seven minutes in this game, but 27 points, 13 to 14, six dunks. Um, obviously, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's nothing to like, like boast about, I guess, but I feel like it's, it's pretty good considering, um, I don't know, just a quick, efficient method. Now I'm going to show you what this is capable of doing real quick. I'm going to just go ahead and show you the, uh, now right here, I'm just kind of scrolling through it as like clip version. Um, but yeah, so they sub me out at the end of the game. Boom. Fast forward to here. We get 11,000 my points and then... Um, I didn't see exactly what the finishing was. Let me go back. Um, finishing 6,000 finishing points, which, you know, it, I feel like eventually I'm, I'll find a better method than this. Um, but honestly, 6,000 finishing points just for playing five minutes in a whole game. I feel like it's pretty freaking good. Um, so yeah, alley-oop dunks give you 700. Um, alley-oop layups give you 550. And then regular dunks, as, as you can see, like I said, um, I guess actually I lied. Yeah, yeah, you get regular layups, regular dunks. Um, so they give you less points, obviously, than like a posterizing dunk, but it's really not that much less. So don't be sweating it too much. Um, contact layups, as you can see, I got a lot of points for this in this game. Obviously, that's just kind of like post up, drop step, and put it up. Um, simple like that. So yeah, um, I would say target to go for the alley oops, like I was saying, but 
if worse comes to worse and like you just can't figure it out then obviously just backing people down and like and just trying to get drop steps is the move but i will say as a, as a small slasher you will you will absolutely love this um uh, off ball screen alley-oop thing that that i'm doing right here so um now right here i just kind of want kind of want to show an example of what happens when uh you don't get the spacing that you would like so as you can see van vliet follows me over to here and then I still have somebody in the in the like strong side corner that I'm working from. So this is like a really bad situation here. But honestly, sometimes it'll still even just work. Like th these defenders right here, you can see they get very confused when these off ball screens happen. Like dudes just get stuck inside each pause. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, I, anyway, let me let me replay that one more time. As you can see, like I said short corner and then even the dude that's in the opposite corner is still kind of in the way like you see he's on the block so this is just really bad spacing but it still works occasionally as long as the dude who's like playing off ball can't really make like a great play on the ball um so yeah i'll just keep carrying on with this just a little bit um i just want to give you guys a lot of examples here that i'm talking about so real quick and i'll just i'll, I'll explain this Sorry for the stutter. <laughs> I'll explain this because um, you'll probably have this happen and you're going to be really confused. Um, so you see, I call for the LB screen once and it's got me like, um, it wants Rondé Hollis Jefferson to set a pick toward the ball handler. As you can see, that's kind of the trajectory it wants me to go at. But um, if you just call for it again, then you'll get this one right here again. So then boom, obviously easy money. Um, when this, I'll, let me point this out too. When this short corner dude doesn't make a play on the ball, this is easy money. You're not even worried about these two defenders right here. Because honestly, they almost both get stuck on the screen. Basically is how it works. But that dude who's camping the paint, he's the real problem. Now, if I could find a way to make them set up in a half court set to where the dude in the in the left corner or like he's camping kind of left block if he could just shift over to the left corner this would be easy money every single time no doubt about it um because obviously then the spacing's perfect and the the defenders just don't react proper when it comes to the two-man little screen game that you work but um anyway yeah so this one's right after subbing in um i just inbound it boom call for the lb um didn't even really get a screen honestly like if you look at it um it wanted me to it wanted me to come off it like this but honestly i just used him as the, now i love how 2k wants to talk about how lt lt cheesing isn't in the game this year <laughs> heck no nah, like look at this look at this i get dude completely stuck on him forget about the help defender it didn't even matter just hammer on him um now i honestly i don't even have lob city finisher on my build yet um i feel like that would actually be a really nice thing to have um and i might even play around with it a little bit just to see how it works but anyway you see Dude tries to make a play on the ball. I should have gave an example of what happens when he does play on the ball properly. Um, but honestly, it's whatever. You guys you guys will see how it works. It's very efficient. I'd put it like that. Um, there's not too much of a struggle when it comes to this stuff. Now, again, obviously, if you get the mismatch, just baby him. It's easy money, just like that. Um, and honestly, half the time, a mismatch is just like a given. Like, <laughs> like my player is a 6'9", small forward, slasher, defender like rebound or whatever you want to call him it's it's the split between the finishing and and defending um but anyway again same thing right here um I, like I, like i said you don't even have to have a perfect screen set up obviously you see he didn't even hit anybody and then there's five people inside the three-point line right now um on defense and four on the offense but it still works um i will say like you see how they leave lowry and back up um if the P if the point guard is like not tall enough, that doesn't even matter. So you don't even, you don't even gotta worry about that. Um, now, obviously, one more thing here as far as what you do on defense. Now, here I'll give you guys a little guide right here. Um, since you can modify your badges however you want, and I did an acrobatic layup there um, just to kind of try to see what you would get for badge points for that. Um, if you wanna just since you can change your badges and all that, I would recommend getting pickpocket no matter what your build is just at the fact that um it's probably the only beneficial thing while going for finishing badges um that you can get as a defensive badge so anyway i'll just recommend that and then you can retool the whole build like once you unlock more de like defensive badges or defensive badge caps you can just remove everything you have on the pickpocket if you don't want it and just put it on something else simple it it's real simple bro um but anyway yeah you see we get twelve thousand. actually i think 11 probably like twenty three thousand. I think, or no, maybe I'm tripping, but 
anyway, you see nice, nice progress towards everything here. Um, and obviously, honestly, bro, I would just recommend playing on five minutes because the VC that you can get from this is real clutch. Like the fact that you can get around a thousand plus VC and speaking of VC, I'll have a video, um, as well, just kind of detailing that. So anyway, now I'm a plug guys. Now you remember how I was showing you how you can get the, uh, the custom, uh, practices. Now, listen, you're going to look at all these points and you'll be like, oh, well, why not do the 750 ones? Or why not do the 700 one? Why are you picking the 650? Honestly, bro, it's not worth my time. It's not worth my effort. It's not worth my concentration. <laughs> um, doing the lob finishes like this, easy money. You just run, hold X, and boom. Like, it's it's all, <laughs> it's just cake. It's just the easiest badge to get, or it's the easiest practice to do. It's simple, literally, boom, just like that. You just sprint, hold X, and you're good. Um, now, you see right here, this is the first time I was doing it, so I was kind of just like, I was pacing myself to not like outrun the lob, but um, I'll skip to this next one, and you'll see, like, eventually, I was just like, once I reached five, I was like, I was like, okay, let me just try sprinting the entire time, and yeah, it, it works perfectly fine. It's definitely, like, you don't even have to concern yourself over it. Like, as long as you're just sprinting, you'll get at least 5 out of 10, no doubt about it. Like, <laughs> honestly, you'll probably get, like, 9 out of 10, regardless. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's all for the vid. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, all that good stuff. Um, appreciate all the support in advance. Um, this is probably my first, like, 2K20 video. That feels so weird to say, 2K20. Um, but... Anyway, yeah, this is probably my first 2K20 video that I'm actually doing. Um, appreciate all the support on the the music, too. Um, I really do appreciate that, man. You guys, it does mean a lot to me. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Uh, drop a like, all that good stuff. Um, I'd, I'll be doing a couple, like, tutorial videos to start the year with, too. But, um, yeah, for the most part, once we get into the, the actual, like, grid of the year... Um, it's going to be a lot of park gameplays, pro-am gameplays, stuff like that. So if you're new, that's just kind of what to expect. But anyway, other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Take it easy, man. Peace.